Microsoft may be winning, but Activision Blizzard is still taking hits as they get sued by the Justice Department. This is a cow's opinion. That's right, I don't have money for transitions or cool graphics or anything. But hey everybody, welcome to the Cow's Channel. Today we are going to talk about, not only did this news break today, it's already been updated with a freaking settlement. And I mean within the hour of the news story, it was updated that it's, it's settled. So let's look at this. Activision Blizzard, as we know, is in the middle of a massive deal to try to be acquired by Microsoft. Now, Sony is against this because just Call of Duty alone, possibly going Xbox exclusive, would be terrible for them. But more and more game companies are coming out publicly and saying, yeah, it's fine, we don't care. And more and more government watchdogs are saying that they actually don't think it's bad. They don't think that it's going to crush anything terribly. And the one exception is that the American uh, government organizations that are in charge of this are still not convinced. But Microsoft seems to slowly but surely just be winning this argument, which is amazing given how badly they seem to be behind the eight ball when this started. But right now, we're going to pivot away from Microsoft for just a moment because Activision Blizzard got sued. Again. So, the Justice Department has been claiming that Activision Blizzard is unfairly putting rules on competitors in their leagues for Overwatch and Call of Duty. So, if you don't know... The deal with Overwatch and Call of Duty is that those leagues are actually run by the company that makes the game. That is not how a lot of esports leagues work. There's many, especially like Evolve and other fighting tournaments, they're not run by any one of the companies that make the games that are at these tournaments. So the game companies and the developers, they will support them. They will like come up with new tools and characters and bounces and everything for them. But they don't have a direct say in how the tournaments are running. Activision Blizzard has been trying to change that because there's potentially a lot of money in here. So for Overwatch and Call of Duty, they have professional leagues run by the company with official teams. And it's kind of like, if you're in America, it's kind of like the NFL, the NBA. They limit how many teams there are so they get to say how many teams and what cities get these teams. They decide who gets to buy these teams. They run the thing. You're kind of like running a franchise. So at times it's like the NFL and at times it's like you're running a McDonald's. So the complaint that the Justice Department issued accused Activision and the independently owned teams and esports leagues of implementing a competitive balance tax designed to penalize a team if the player compensation exceeded a threshold set by the makers of the game. So what that means is that they said, hey, we're going to have a hard cap on how much you can pay these players. Now, caps are not necessarily bad. But this wasn't to like keep one team from dominating and just offering $10 million a head. This was because Activision Blizzard runs the teams. And they did not want too much money going to the players because that would have been less money for them. Video games and esports are among the most popular, fastest growing forms of entertainment in the world today. And professional esports players, like all workers, deserve the benefits of competition for their services. Activision's conduct prevented that from happening as Jonathan Cantor, who is an assistant attorney general of the Justice Department's Antitrust Division, he goes on to say, Today's lawsuit makes clear that the Antitrust Division remains committed to protecting workers across all types of industries from anti-competitive conduct. So the Antitrust Division also filed a consent decree and it is trying to forbid, we have the update already, like I said, it was amazingly fast. It's trying to forbid activism from putting rules that limit player compensation or put that kind of heavy luxury tax if you pay above a certain amount in which. Because again, unlike, the NFL has a luxury tax, but that's more to keep things competitive. It's so that Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys doesn't just give everybody an extra $20 million dollars. 
and have all of the first strings in every single position. That's to keep teams competitive. This was different. This was because, again, the NFL does not directly own and run the teams. They own and run the league that the teams compete in. Activision Blizzard owns and runs the teams and the league, and they just franchise them out to people who want to own them. And apparently the franchisees have not been making a lot of money, but that's a possible other video for another time. And the article concludes about the FTC trying to bid the $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. But already, we have an update. First of May, no. What? The update is today, but no, there's, uh, this is definitely wrong. I guess they accidentally chose the wrong month or something. The Justice Department has reportedly agreed to a settlement with Activision Blizzard. Spokesperson says Activision Blizzard Esports is committed to being a leader in the esports industry and creating opportunities for players to earn fair pay and benefits. When we launched the Overwatch and Call of Duty leagues, we wanted to create viable career opportunities for the players requiring minimum salaries and mandatory benefits as part of player contracts. As a league, we also wanted our cup products to be competitive, so we carefully designed and implemented the competitive bounds tax. We have always believed and still believe that the competitive balance tax was lawful and it did not have an adverse impact on players' salaries. The tax was never levied and the leagues voluntarily dropped it from our rules in 2021. We remain committed to a player ecosystem with fair pay and health care and continue to have the least restrictive player mobility compensation system across all of the major sports leagues. Now, if you don't live in America, you probably think... That's weird that they're not admitting any guilt or wrongdoing or bad stuff happening. Unfortunately, in America, the Justice Department, the FTC, uh, all these enforcement agencies have no nuts. And whenever they catch companies doing stuff wrong, they always let them say, we admit no wrong duty, but we're changing the rules and do no wrongdoing, excuse me, but we're changing the rules and paying a fine anyway. Which is the stupid, of course you know that they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. This was obviously hurting player salaries to some extent. And I'm sure that we'll see articles going deeper into it. And figure out exactly what happened in the future. But yeah, no, the if it was a luxury tax like the end of the... Uh, the FTC does not go... And the Department of Justice and all these other groups, they're not going after the NFL. The Department of Justice isn't going after the NFL even though they have a luxury tax. Because that's not massively punitive, and it's not intended to suppress player wages. The reason, the main difference is, if you don't know, the NFL has stipulations that X amount of money has to go to the players every year. That's why as these TV deals and the NFL make more money, the cap on each team continuously goes up, allowing player salaries to rise. And they also like, oh, we need to increase our rookie minimums because... The rookies got to get paid, man. But Activision Blizzard didn't have these kind of stipulations. They had nothing that said there's a minimum floor. They had a ceiling. They didn't have a floor. And that's not right. Because you're, on, you're limiting players' upside. And it... Because then you can have a race to the bottom. It's too dangerous. The teams could all say, well, we're not going to pay anyone more than, like, 100 k a year. And now you've drastically limited the amount of money that these professionals can... And remember, this is the official Overwatch League. The official Call of Duty League. You can go play these in other tournaments and areas, but... These have the biggest eyes on them. So if you want to be a professional on this game, this is where you need to be. So what is a cow's opinion on this? Yeah, seriously. Blizzard Activision got their hand caught the cookie jar. It's great that they voluntarily dropped it in 2021, but there's such a thing as, you know, you you can catch someone doing something wrong a couple years past it. A statue of limitations is the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Brain. You're welcome, Cal. You're doing great. Thank you so much. I try really hard. But, yeah, so, obviously, the rules were somewhat copied from other rules that are successful but apparently they just skewed too much to protecting the company's profits and not actually helping players. 
So that's my opinion. Activision Blizzard got their hand caught in the cookie jar. They're probably going to not have to admit to any liability. But they've already agreed to a settlement. The settlement probably says something along the lines of you pay a fine of X amount of dollars. And you also promise to never do a competitive balance tax like this again. Because we caught you doing it wrong and you're not going to do that again. So that's it. Uh, I know that a lot of people are worried about Activision getting bought by Microsoft, but if these are the kind of deals they're making over Kotick, I say sell them to Microsoft and let them clean house. I'm sorry. At some point, you just gotta use a flamethrower to get all the vermin out. Just like certain Call of Duty games, actually. Uh, but this is just another in a long line of what the hell were you thinking? Guys, play more games. Games are awesome, and I'll see you next time.